You are now listening to FNB Radio. Radio. And welcome to FNB Radio. My name is Lindsay Collins and I'm your host. It's um November now. All of a sudden I find myself Googling things like chimney sweep and getting some really interesting results. Chimney sweeping... I only associate chimney sweeping with Mary Poppins. I never knew that I had to do that as a person living in the South. Because you don't really use your fireplace. You're like, you know, a couple times a year. Well, that's not true. We use ours a lot for a very short period of time. Like we'll use it every day when it's cold. But it just barely gets cold enough to actually make it make sense. And in the past, we've had like, I don't know, like firewood on supply chain shortages <laughs> where I just don't think about it in time or like the people say the wood's seasoned, but then it gets here and it's like still a tree, like intact in the ground, like has roots and green leaves on it. And you're like, this, this is seasoned. They're like, oh yeah, it's ready to burn. And then you put it on your fire and it just smokes your house out. And everybody feels like, you know, they were starring in the movie Backdraft. But anyway, this year I was like, we're good because last year we had to shut down fireplace season early because our chimney, after five years of use, a very minimal use, it finally got like a little cloggy, you know, like it's just not working like it should. And so I know that it needs to be clean. Jeremy's told me that that's why it's happening. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to Google a chimney sweep is... It's fucking the guy from Mary Poppins coming, Bert. Why can't it? Dick Van Dyke. Is Dick Van Dyke going to show up at my house? I hope so. Um, I've all, side note, I've always had a major crush on Dick Van Dyke. Major. Even now, would consider it. I know he's like 100, but I'm like, you're still, you still got it. Dick Van Dyke. I mean... That guy's amazing. Anyway, so I Googled it and it was like Ash Busters. They really nailed the C-E-S-C-E-O game. They they were the first one to come up. And even the kids really liked their name because Roman, who's only four, was like, did you call Ash Busters back? Like it, it stuck in his head. And I was like, Ash Busters. To me, I don't think it's that clever. Because it doesn't really sound, it's not like a substitute word for ghost. It's just like if I were to put like radio busters and then use like the Ghostbusters logo as a visual pun for my podcast. It just, it isn't that clever, but I get where they're going with it. They're trying to bust the ash in your house, I guess. I would, I would even be more into like a curt, like a cheeky little curse word thing, like a ash kissers, you know? That would be funnier to me than Ash Busters. But anyway, we called Ash Busters and they were like, yeah, no problem. We'll get you in there um, in at the end of December. And I was like, what? That's too long. So, you know, we're freezing now in our home. No, we have heat. We have central heat. But I want a fire. I'm like, de- I'm like determined to get a fireplace working this season. And I'm actually determined to get a lot of things right this season, which leads me to my next point, which is Thanksgiving. If you followed this podcast for any amount of time, you know that Thanksgiving is my high season. Like I love this time of year, not necessarily the holiday Thanksgiving itself, but it sort of kicks off the celebratory season that I love. Um, But the past few years, I'm just going to say it really since 2020, they've kind of fallen flat. Like it's like the magic of Thanksgiving is gone. It's like things are too hard in the world and people are like, do we have to keep doing this? Like it it just, I don't know. When I was a kid, it was like so magical. And even when I worked in New York, it was like one of the, the most magical times. But I've realized over the years that maybe Thanksgiving is just like a, like a dragon I'm chasing, you know, like, was it ever that fun? I'm, I've been trying to sort it out in my head and I'm damned and determined This year, that's not that saying, but you know what I mean? I can't, I haven't had enough coffee yet. Uh, I'm, I'm determined to make this Thanksgiving as good in real life as it is in my memory. 
You know what I mean? Because in my memory, when I think Thanksgiving, I immediately go like, oh man, that's my favorite time of year. But then when I'm actually in it, I'm like, fuck, I hate this. So what's the disconnect? How, what's the dragon I'm chasing? When was it last fun? I think back to Thanksgiving's past and I'm like, they all seem fun in distant memory. But then day of, you're kind of like, I'll, I'll tell you what specifically has been like not that fun the past years. One major thing in the past couple years that's not been that cool. And I feel like if I'm looking at Thanksgiving with constructive criticism, I'm like, what happened there? Why, why didn't I have fun? It's been the food, which sounds weird coming from me because I'm like, everyone in my family's a great cook. Our recipes are rock solid. The classics are rock solid. But I, it's like, I don't know if my tastes have changed or what, but I'm like every year something gets put on the like, fuck that. I'm not making it next year list. And it starts with green bean casserole. It's just a bad, it's a bad dish that I used to really love. And I don't know why I can't like it anymore. I don't know what happened. They say your taste change every seven years, but I feel like for like a good 21 years, I was just like, damn, this is good. Like, this is so good. You can't fucks with it. Like, it's the best thing on the Thanksgiving menu. And then, like, it got crossed off the list, like, two years ago. I keep making it, but every year I'm like, why? And I've tried the fancy ways. I've tried the green bean almondine type of way. I've tried making my own mushroom soup. I've tried using Trader Joe's version. Here's here's what I will say. If you are going to make it and you love this dish, please don't get anything healthy. Just make the Campbell's soup one and just be disgusted with yourself and just eat it and just love it. Because that is, I think where I started going wrong was I tried to fancify this dish that was kind of fading for me. I tried to put it on life support by going to Whole Foods, which I will say like, don't do it. The canned mushroom stuff from Whole Foods, I don't know what it is, but it is some of the I put it down the drain last year. If you remember the the post Thanksgiving episode, I put so much green bean casserole down the garbage disposal that then we had to pay $400 for someone to come and snake it out. And it like broke the whole sewage system in our home, this green bean casserole. Even the sewage system was like, fuck this green bean casserole. This is bad. So I will say, if you are going to stick to your guns and make it, just make the regular one straight up and put soy sauce in it and put grated cheese in it and use the Campbell's soup and, and the canned green beans and don't fuck around, okay? But a lot over time, a lot of these dishes have started to fade for me. The only ones that really hang on are the dressing um, and the sweet potato casserole. Those are the only ones that I'm really like, I got to fucking have that. But I've I've been more in a place of like, okay, so if you can't do these casseroles, like we got to pivot to something that's undeniable, you know, like a like a mashed potatoes and really well done gravy. So like I'm going to strip it down. I'm just trying to lay my plans is what I'm trying to say. Is I'm trying to find the spark. I'm trying to find that spark for Thanksgiving. But I think it's going to take some looking at Thanksgiving from a different angle for me this year. I, I'm interested to see how you guys are feeling about Thanksgiving or why, if I'm alone in that, that it's something that once was my favorite time of year. I'm just like, it's really not been. The other thing that is worth noting is that last year, my mom was very much in cancer treatment um, in the middle of it. And it was just kind of a sad emotional time. So I think it's, it, I think it has a lot to do with your, your emotional state, which is what I'm learning. Like maybe the food wasn't ever that maybe the green bean casserole has always been disgusting. But when you're like amped to watch the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade with your sisters and your family's all coming and you get to run wild and eat a bunch of pie, everything tastes good. It's like your, your mindset is what makes it taste good. And that's the Charlie Brown version is like, just <laughs> emphasize gratitude and you could eat anything and it would be, it would give you that spark. But I tend to think there's more, more layers to it than that. But I will say last year, that was one of the reasons we ended up doing Thanksgiving, just us. And it was very sweet. It was just the five of us. Um, but I think that had to do with some of the reason why it's like, if you, you got to have people to share it with. So that's the other thing. That's the other hot tip. Like if you're going to do it, 
don't make it for just you and your fam, you know, invite some randos if you have to invites, but hopefully your friends or your family, like make enough. Thanksgiving is kind of about coming together. And I think I've tried to, you know, over time figure out if that's really the recipe is like people, because sometimes the people are what ruins it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Depending on how your family is like the people can be the, the sucky part. Like they can be the ones that um, really blow it. The food can be fire, but then the people, you're just like, God, I want a different family. But, or friends, you know, it doesn't have to be your family. Everybody's situation is different. And so that's one of the things that I'm trying to sort out is like how many people and where. So I've learned my lesson from last year. Like I don't want to go to all that trouble just for five people. I would do something much more... Uh, understated. If I was going to do a small Thanksgiving, which I think is cool, I would definitely change the menu up dramatically and really just do like some kind of um, incredible fancy meal, but not, not the standard because what people end up getting stuck in is how do you pare it down? How do you part with the dish that everybody has a different dish that's like there? I don't feel like it's Thanksgiving unless I have this dish. So you get into that cycle where you're like, all right, fine. And we'll make a mac and cheese. All right. All right. Fuck it. Yeah. We'll also do cranberry sauce. Fine. Okay. You want to do rolls? That's cool. If that's your thing, that's cool. I, and you end up just making the whole thing, which is what happened last year. So how am I going to make it work this year? This is what I'm asking myself as I woke up this morning on November 3rd, kind of in shock that it's November. Um, and also wondering why ash busters can't come until December. But anyway, I did, uh, I'll talk to you about that later, but I found another, Jeremy actually found this guy, Richard, who's going to come and sweep our chimney. Um, he answered the phone whilst inside someone else's chimney. And that's how you know he's not just here for gimmicks and um, 80s movies references. He's here to actually do some fucking work. He's up in someone's chimney. He's balls deep in someone else's chimney. And he's just like, hello, where are you at? What I want you to do right now. (laughs) I could hear him through Jeremy's phone two rooms over. This guy was just like getting shit done. Sadly, the next day he called and was like, I have a fever. I can't come. So he's coming on Monday. But I'm still, he's still coming before December 3rd. So I'm like, the only person I want coming down my chimney in December is Santa. So if you can't get here before then, like you're no help to me. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so I woke up trying to figure out what am I going to do? Here's the other unique situational kind of curveball that we have. Our baby boy Roman is turning five on Black Friday. So this got me thinking. What if you just sort of forego the traditional Thanksgiving unless you happen to get invited to like your mom's or your sister's or something and then hint, hint, I don't know if they're listening, Um, but maybe they do it and you just like roll up as a guest, bring one side and then on Black Friday, you throw a very fun party that can also be a birthday party that is just like friends sitting around a fire making turkey paninis or like little tiny bites that are Thanksgiving. They're like akin to Thanksgiving, but they don't make you sit down and have to eat this whole big meal at a certain time. And I'll tell you what the inspiration for this is, is one year we had uh, a cocktail party planned. I always try to do a Thanksgiving cocktail party, either the night of Thanksgiving, like Thursday night or Black Friday, because people are sick of their families. They want to kind of get out. Um, It just feels like a fun night to give people something else to do other than just sit around and be like, why did I eat so much fucking green bean casserole? Or if you're me, just being like, why did we grow apart green bean casserole? Mine's like more of an emotional, just me feeling like I got dumped by green bean casserole, even though I'm the one that was dumping it down the fucking garbage disposal. It can't take that kind of volume. Just so you know, like garbage disposals, they're kind of a sham. They say they can grind up food, but then when you put a whole casserole down them, all of a sudden they break. Um, so don't get caught in that. But anyway, one year 
we were roasting two turkeys because we were doing kind of a large Thanksgiving and we wanted leftovers, which everybody knows is the only reason you do it. And so we started roasting the tur- one of the turkeys that was going to be for leftover the night before. And some friends, just by accident, not by invitation, just ended up coming over. And so I was like, hey, let me make you a taste of my signature Thanksgiving cocktail that we're going to serve tomorrow night at the cocktail party. And then somehow the party just got out of control. One drink turned into somebody else came in and wanted a drink. And then the turkey was ready. And we had this really good sourdough. And I whipped up some kind of aioli or like chive mayo and put some maple syrup. We just went crazy on the fly and started making accidentally the most fun I've ever had in any Thanksgiving activity. Like it was like the turkey was just on the stove and we were like a pack of hyenas, just kind of drunk, half drunk (laughs) and tearing apart this turkey. I started putting some sourdough into olive oil and griddling it and putting the turkey and putting on these beautiful aiolis and cheeses and different things to make um, an un-Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. And what happened was, Honestly, it was one of the worst Thanksgiving days of all time because we were so hungover, no one could function. But that party lives in infamy because it was actually more fun and no one really wanted to do anything the next day because they were like, well, how could we top that? It was just epic and it was so fun. And then we kind of all, you know, loathed getting through the meal the next day because we were like, sorry, I already ate a whole turkey. Um, when I was drunk last night, but now I'm, I'm hungover or hangover averse. Like I don't really want to be that fucked up, but I would like to recreate the spirit of everyone kind of standing around in an informal situation, but the food is really delicious and small bites. It's not like you have to, you can just sort of graze to your heart's content, like the spirit of that leftovers out on the island and everyone's just kind of having their, their own way. I think that's what I want to do. Or maybe I'll put a crispy oyster on top of a little cutout of dressing and maybe a dollop of gravy and some herbs, crispy sage and call that like a canapé, you know, and like have everybody sit outside around a fire and maybe some people, you know, the kids go off to bed early and then some people just have some grown-up fun. Maybe you do make a cocktail. Maybe you take a gummy. Maybe you pass around one of those left-handed cigarettes. <laughs> maybe you do whatever sounds fun and, like, isn't just the traditional Thanksgiving. And maybe it'll kind of, um, it'll bring me back around. Because what I really want is a good time. And I think that, in a nutshell, is what's been missing. The last few Thanksgivings have felt like there's been fun moments. Don't get me wrong. But the last few Thanksgivings have been like going through the motions. Like I'm really just trying to like fake it till I make it and and reach this place that I used to be. Um, and, and that just kind of, that just hasn't been working for me. So I want to take sort of a different approach on top of the fact that it's Roman's birthday and I want to make a distinct differential between like, hey, this isn't just like every other year where we're at Thanksgiving. We're like, and also happy birthday to you, sweet baby. I want to have like a party for him that feels like a birthday party, but with Thanksgiving leaning foods. So stay tuned for that. I think that's what I'm going to work on. I don't know how to figure out the logistics of it just yet, but I think I'm going to plan to keep it low key and be a guest on Thanksgiving and then really put my efforts into the Friday birthday party slash Black Friday cocktail party at our house. And maybe that will, I feel already just talking to you about it, I feel excited, which is more than I can say for the last three years, you know? Um, But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just sort of, I'm trying to get all that organized in my brain. Because it comes at you fast. And then all of a sudden you're just like in the rat race (laughs) trying to to find a can of pumpkin. Mm. But I don't know. I will say it's also the time of year that I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that at Trader Joe's currently, and this isn't like one of those mommy blog, here's the gluten-free pancakes that my kids love. 
It's not that. This is um, a PSA that the best crispy onions are available in a can at Trader Joe's. They go on everything from an arugula salad to crispy, crunchy tuna hand rolls, soups, literally any sandwiches. They are, I buy them, I buy about 12. I buy like three every time I go to the store, which is two to three times a week. So by the end of the season, they keep for at least a year. You have enough all year long, but they really don't stock them for very long. So make sure you get them while you can. They're not like the French's ones. They're like, you could put them side by side with crispy shallots or fried shallots at a restaurant, any restaurant I've worked at. And I would be like, these are just as good, if not better. So definitely get those. If you don't, you know, if you don't do anything else holiday themed, go ahead and it's French's crispy onions, but it's not French's. It's the Trader Joe's crispy onions season. Um, and it's a seasonal, it's, it's as seasonal as kabocha squash to me. I'm like, I don't get as excited about parsnips as I do about the fucking crispy onions from Trader Joe's. So please, they're in a green can. They're over by like the, um, well, they're usually on the end cap or somewhere like that, but they're also just, I think on the pasta olive oil condiment aisle. If you've never experienced it, please, you can put them on eggs. I, I literally use them at every meal. I put them in burritos. I put them in a burrito with just refried beans, salsa, crispy onions, cheese, and then I wrap it up in tinfoil and put it into the oven and let it get all molten. I mean, there's endless uses. Uh, again, the sushi component, like if you're making at-home sushi or any kind of like tartare, my God. Please put a crispy onion on it for fuck's sake. That's all I'm saying. I'm most thankful for crispy onions from Trader Joe's. Because I've just never even, I don't even know what dupe they are. You know, usually Trader Joe's, it's like, this is a dupe for something else. I'm like, where, who's making those? Because they are fucking amazing. Anyway, stay tuned for more Thanksgiving plans as they come, you know, to life in my brain. I will be letting you know, because usually I do like hot tips around Thanksgiving. If you, like I said, if you followed this show for a long time, you know that this is my Super Bowl, typically. Um, and I'm just trying to find that loving feeling that I lost. And I hope that you are doing the same. I hope you never lost it. I hope you're like already have your plans made. I want to know what they are. I want to know how many people you're serving. I want to know all of it what you're, if you're feeling the same way I'm feeling, let me know. Because I, at this point, I'm just trying to be honest up front. Cause usually I just like most of us grin and bear it through the holidays. And then later I'm like, fuck, I hated that. And I don't want to do that. I want to be like, let's get proactive. Let's get proactive with sorting through our emotions around Thanksgiving and why, um, why it ain't been the same since 2020. You know, because that's really when I noticed that it stopped being cool for me. Um, and maybe it's because people couldn't be together. And that was like the beginning of just being like some weird psychological uh, associations around Thanksgiving. I don't know. I don't know what happened because it's it's one of those that I thought would never die. Like, I really don't get that excited about holidays. I'm not like a... I can't wait to put my Christmas tree up. I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, I put it up for as little bit as I can. And then I, tr I take it down as soon as I can. Like, I don't love the, the commercialism of holidays. And so I'm like, Thanksgiving is just, uh, it's just an excuse to put really delicious food on display. Um, so I'm going to be rethinking how I do it. And I want to get something fun going for Black Friday. But whatever you do and whatever you're planning, let me know. Maybe you can inspire me and maybe I'll inspire you or maybe we can help each other sort through how to make it something that's actually fun this year. And if you've just always been having fun and you love Thanksgiving, like let me know that too because that actually would just be really nice to hear. Uh, but anyway, I love you. I'm sorry to, I want to personally apologize to Ash Busters because I realize I'm like, I, I don't know. They could be a really good service. They probably are. That's why they're so busy. They couldn't get here until December, but I wasn't trying to 
trying to trash them. I just um just really need this chimney swept so I can light up the night with these with these logs. Um thank you so much for listening. You can rate the show. And I say that as in an invitation. Like please rate the show. Review the show. Good, bad or otherwise. I'm um I'm open to it all. But if you love the show and you want to share it with somebody, that's a great way to do it is by rating it. Because then when you rate it and like leave a review, other people see it that maybe you don't even know. And it just helps the show get seen. So it's a really nice thing to do. Uh, and I'm, I'm feeling, even just in talking about this Thanksgiving, I'm feeling a little bit of the spark come back. I'm feeling a little bit of that love and feeling. Like I have some ideas for some holiday content now. <laughs> So already just talk, I, just whenever I need inspiration, I just need to come to you guys. Um, so definitely share your thoughts or what you're making um, or leave a review or just share this podcast with a friend and I'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.